Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Coming up next is an episode of an almost lost, almost forgotten television series. It was a very popular series. There were comic books and premium rings for kids, for toys, all kinds of things. There were 39 episodes. The title of this series is Steve Donovan, Western Marshal. The title of this episode is The Comanche Kid. And our stars are Douglas Kennedy, Eddie Waller, and you'll also see Tom Tyler. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this. And we'll see you after the show. Flashing out of the pages of American history come the exciting tales of the early western frontier. A primitive land torn by primitive conflicts and boiling with the feuds and lawless strife of frontier days. Here on the rugged edge of civilization, some of the most desperate outlaws the world has ever known swarmed like a black plague, looting and robbing. But here too, determined to bring peace and justice to this turbulent region of six guns and sudden death, was another breed of men, the courageous officers appointed to wear the proudest badge of all, the badge of the Western Marshal. its river and the Rio Grande, ravaged by the most notorious outlaw in all western Texas, a murderer whose very name struck terror into the hearts of men, women, and children. His name was the Comanche Kid. Near the headwaters of the Pecos, an army garrison awaits the return of a lawman who has had orders to bring back the Comanche Kid, dead or alive. <laughs> there are only five candles on it, ma'am. That's right. One for every year that Rusty's told me he's still 54. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty, aren't you ever going to reach 55? What for? So they can retire me? No, sirree. Today, I'm 54 years old again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rusty, what are you saving those two for? That's for you and the lieutenant, Mom. Oh, thank you, Rusty. And I'm sure he'll enjoy it. Why, he'll set himself down right in front of the jailhouse and make the Comanche kid watch him eat it. <laughs> I'll bet that Comanche kid would like to die when he seen who was after him. <laughs> George. This is Hayes. Bob, don't let her see him. You better go back to your house, Mrs. Hayes. He's been tortured. Yeah, and shot in the back. I hope he got that first before this. I found him lying off the trail, up near the Comanche reservation. I never thought a Comanche could outsmart the lieutenant. It ain't likely, son. I never know the Comanche to torture like this. What do you mean? I mean this was done by a white man who wanted it to look like a redskin done it. It is strange he'd leave the body by the reservation. Are you sure? As sure as I know now, the Comanche kid ain't no real Indian. But, Captain, Hayes and I were friends ever since we were kids. I'm only asking for what I know he'd ask for if it had been me. I know as much about the Comanche kid as any man here, sir. Except what he looks like. Well, that's a coin that has two sides, sir. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't know what I look like, either. But he'll kill a marshal on sight if he can. Well, suppose I'm not a marshal. Suppose I'm just a cowboy on the loose. It's an idea. Hayes found one town in the Mercer County where the kid never had any luck. Well, where's that, sir? A little town called Sonora. The one town where no one's ever looked for the Comanche kid before. Wonder if that's where Hayes might have met it. 
Maybe, maybe not. He might have met the kid before he ever got there. But the Comanche kid's got to be stopped somehow. Had another letter from the governor this morning. People are afraid to settle there now. How many men will you need? I think this can be done best by just one man, sir. What about Rusty? Well, two might be a crowd. Suit yourself. Here's a warrant for his arrest. Draw one week's patience. If you're not back by then, I'll know that. Thanks, Captain. Good luck, cowboy. Rusty, I thought I told you you Can't help it, can't help it. Captain's orders. You're lying. It ain't likely. The captain told me to draw a week's rations, but he... Oh, you asked him, didn't you? Well, it wasn't exactly like that. He... You he... told him I asked for you. Well, I knew you meant to. You just forgot. Well, this time you tell him you forgot. All right. Hey. Huh? Where are you going? Well, you just told me to get. I did not. Well, you meant it. I didn't say so. You did. Now, look, what do you make of these? Well, the fellow that brought in Lieutenant Hayes was riding a lame horse. Any ding-dang fool would know he made them tracks. I haven't got it, I tell you. Much more, this is my land. Do you understand? I paid for it with my own money. Hey, Savvy, you live Comanche land. You pay $5,000. $5,000? That's outright robbery, and you know it. White man rob Comanche. You pay me back or me kill Comanche way. Look around for yourself. I haven't got that kind of money. You get money soon. When? I come back. One week. One week? I'd have to sell my ranch to raise that kind of money. I'll never do that. You pay money or house is fire. Comanche kid, kill. Yes, I know you will. Heard all about you. All right, I'll get the money. You no know, tell white man. Keep mouth shut. I won't say anything. One week. Cross, Morgan? Of course he will. What's the matter, Clem? You nervous? Clem didn't like that Western Marshal after us any more than I did. And that goes for these stage holdups, too. If we hadn't done any more than scare people into selling their ranches, they'd have become suspicious of us by now. Yeah, but we never worked this close to Sonora before. It's time we did, before they become suspicious of that, too. Hutter won't scare easy. He's scared now. Scared enough to sell us a ranch that holds the water rights to the entire country. That'll mean steady money from now on. You be top man around here, Morgan. Yeah, I've waited long enough to be. Then we can stop playing the Comanche kid and get down to business. So I've no choice but to sell now, Ben. That's why I've come to you. Well, I'm sorry that I can't give you more than 5,000, John, but under the circumstances... Oh, you're being as fair as you can. I know you've helped a lot of the other ranchers when they were threatened. No, I only did what I could. Well, if you can pay me now. Yes, I think I can. You left a sign there, too. Yeah. John, when is the West going to have men of principle who stand up to bandits like the Comanche kid and deal with them on their own terms? It's risky business, Ben, when men take the law in their own hands. Well, of course it is. But when there is no law, you have to substitute individual courage and act on your own. Courage. I think you've got something there. Well, I wish I could put up the kind of a fight you have. Of course, I had to hire a professional gunman to help me. My last ranch hand left me yesterday. So they've all deserted you, huh? Yeah. You know, Ben, maybe I've been a little upset and hasty. Maybe it's courage I've needed. 
I think I'll hold off selling for a few days. Well, isn't that a little dangerous, John? I hope you have some plan to fight this outlaw. Well, frankly, I haven't, yes. But I'll think of something. Well, just as you like. Perhaps you'll change your mind. No, Ben. You showed me that fighting this bandit is worth staking my life on. If it's courage that's needed, I won't be found lacking. Good luck, John. Thanks for everything, Ben. What happened, boss? He signed the bill of sale. I talked him out of it, and he took it away with him. Oh, my dear departed wife, rest her soul, always said I talk too much. Clem, I want that bill of sale back here. I get you. Nobody else knows about it, so just make it look like somebody tried to rob him. Go on, get going. Yeah, I'll hit him off at the pass. Rifle shot, son. Yeah. Looks like it came from around the bend there. Come on, let's go. just grazed his head. Huh. His name is John Hutter. I remember. We passed his ranch back a ways. Yeah. How's he coming? Well, he may have a chance. We better get him home. Looks like that shooting there and he's a holding done him some good after all. What is it, Rusty? Blood. And it's heading up through them rocks. What he was stealing. See if there's anything in his pocket, Trusty. Who is this critter? It's a bill of sale, the Hutter Ranch. Something else for you here. Look at here. And this belonged to Lieutenant Hayes. To my loving husband, George, from Peggy, June 1870. Uh, that dirty yeller sneaking sidewinder. He's dying too easy. No, Rusty. It's two ladies dead. So he was a Comanche kid. You think so? Doesn't make sense to me. What do you mean it don't make sense? That's the lieutenant's watch, ain't it? Yeah, sure it is, but the Comanche kid's too smart to be caught stealing a bill of sale like this. Oh. You mean he's just one of the kid's gang, huh? Maybe. Then your idea of going to Sonora is all right. Rusty, it looks like we're closing in. We better go slow before we get our heads blowed off. <laughs> First thing, we gotta get Hutter back to his ranch. It's closer than town. And here, take this with you. Hide it till we find out what's happened. What about him? Well, I'll take him into town with me, see who he is. I'll meet you back at the ranch later. Right. What's up? Clem's dead. What? I said Clem's dead. Where? What happened? They found him in the pass. Hutter must have killed him. This will queer everything, Morgan. Let's clear out of here while we can. Now, wait a minute. Did they find that bill of sale on him? No, I searched him. Did you bring him in? No, a stranger. I don't know who he is. Maybe he knows something about the bill. I doubt it, boss. He said he's just a cowboy looking for a job. Oh, he did, huh? And why would an ordinary cowboy be bringing Clem's body into town? I never thought of that. Most guys would be scared to have anything to do with it because somebody might try to pin it on them. We've got to get rid of him. Yeah? How? You're going to frame him. What about you? No, no, I can't afford to be seen arguing with him. Now, here's what you do.
you. Are you the fellow that brought in Clem? You're a friend of his? Some of his personal belongings that he had on him is missing. Did you see them? Maybe. Where are they? I wouldn't know. You'd better hand them over, stranger. What do you want with them? That's none of your business. I'm telling you to hand them over. You better forget about them, mister. Quit stalling. This is a nice, respectable place. And we don't like crooks who steal from dead men. Take it easy, Luke. You heard the stranger. He doesn't have them. I'm going to get Clem's things if I have to take them away from you myself. I wouldn't try it if I were you, mister. Yeah? I'll give you to the count of three to hand them over. One. Careful, stranger. Luke has the fastest draw in town. Two. Why don't you forget it, Luke? I'm warning you for the last time. Hand over what you stole from Clem. I'll get you for that. You'll do nothing of the kind. I hired you to protect me and my property, not to cause trouble. Now go on over to the doctor and calm down. Fast shooting, stranger. And buy you a drink? All right. Sorry I had that little misunderstanding with Luke. You his boss? Yes. I hired him to protect me against this Comanche kid. I guess the loss of his friend made him lose his temper. I apologize for it. Oh, that's all right. I, uh, I thought for a while it was a put-up job, but I can see you're on the square. Of course. Glad you understand. And I guess I'll have to be on the square with you. I did take something from Clem. But after I learned his name, I figured it didn't belong to him in the first place. Oh? Why was that? Because on the inside, it says to George from Peggy. Now, George wasn't Clem's name, was it? Oh, of course it wasn't. And I'm wondering uh, how Clem got a hold of it. Well, I wouldn't know about that, my friend. But I'm glad you're honest enough to give it to me. You looking for a job? That's right. Clem's death leaves a job open for a man who can take care of himself. Are you interested? I'll let you know. All right. Think it over and come and see me when you've made up your mind. The name's Morgan. What I'd like to know is, where did Clem get this? That's the watch he took from that Western Marshal you knocked off. What? That stupid, blundering fool. Where'd you find it, boss? A cowboy gave it to me. He said it couldn't be Clem's because his name wasn't in the back. You think he knows more than he's saying? I don't know, Luke. Either he's a fool or he's the smartest man I've met in a long time. I was about to go into town looking for you. Yeah, how's Hunter? Well, he probably got a man-sized headache, but outside of that, he's in pretty good shape. Inside resting now. Any luck at Sonora? Maybe. What happened? Well, for one thing, I met our dead friend's boss. The Comanche kid? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. The fellow's name is Morgan. Morgan? Not Ben Morgan. Yeah, that's right. You know him? Nope, but Hunter does. He did a lot of mumbling before he come to. And he mentioned that name Morgan three or four times. He kept saying, Morgan is right. Folks around here should stand up to the Comanche kid. If Morgan is the Comanche kid, he wouldn't be telling the folks to fight back. No, well, wouldn't he? What better way to avert suspicion from himself? Boy, you get something there. I think we'd better have a little talk with Mr. Hutter. Sure. It's time for me to redress his wounds anyways. Come on. After I shot back, Next thing I knew, I came to here when your friend was patching me up. You say it was Clem who took a shot at me? That's right, Mr. Hunter. That watch proves to me that Clem must have been working for the Comanche Kid. Are you trying to tell me the Comanche Kid is Ben Morgan? Well, after hearing your story, I'm reasonably sure that Luke was trying to find out if I had that bill of sale. I've known Ben Morgan for... For how long, sir? Two, three years. That ain't so long, partner. Long enough for me to make friends with a man who's trying to maintain law and order. 
Just who are you two, anyway? Western Marshals. That's right. I know it's hard to suspect Morgan. He's a very powerful and clever man. The Comanche kid's crimes have been clever, too, once you accept the fact that he's really someone else in disguise. So he tried to frame me into selling my ranch, the most valuable piece of property in the county. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, nothing right now. If Morgan is the Comanche kid, I think I know a way to force him to show his hand. Yes, how? I've got a plan, Mr. Hutter, but we'll have to work fast. Oh, hello, stranger. Come on in. Sit down. A cigar or a drink? No, thanks. Oh, decided to come to work? Mr. Hutter has asked me to work for him. Oh, doing what? Looking after him and his ranch. He said he'd been threatened by the Comanche kid. Yeah, yeah, he told me about that. <laughs> it's a big job. It's big money, too. He's giving me a piece of his ranch. Oh, I can't meet any offer like that. Just be the two of you alone. Won't you need some help? Well, the Comanche kid isn't due until tomorrow night. That gives me time to ride into Cassis tonight and hire some more men. I'm on my way there now. I see. Well, good luck, stranger. What'd you say your name was? I didn't say, but uh, thanks for the offer just the same, Mr. Morgan. Maybe we can get together some other time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can. Goodbye. Goodbye. Looks like you talked yourself out of a deal with Hutter. No, I didn't, Luke. I'm not going to wait for him to get more men. What do you mean? The Comanche kid pays visit tonight. I get you. What about him? I'm not sure, but we better figure on seeing him again soon. I didn't expect you till tomorrow night. You got money? No, no, I haven't got it yet, but not until I... And sell ranch. No. Bill of sale for my ranch. What do you want with it? Fine. All right, you. Drop those guns. Take off that disguise. Ben Morgan. Thought I'd be in Coast East tonight. Well, I wasn't sure, so I took a precaution. And you were right, boss. All right, drop your guns, cowboy. And put your hands up. Give you away, John. You'll never get away with it, Ben. I don't intend to. Not as the Comanche kid. Your friend here is going to be found dead with these clothes on. It looked like you shot him after he wounded you mortally. You'll never convince anyone I was the Comanche kid. Oh, why not? Because I'm a Western Marshal. So is he. Oh. Well, I think I can still handle it. Sure glad you do, boss. If I were you, Luke, I wouldn't be so happy. Yeah? Why not? Because now you're going to be the fall guy. He don't know what he's talking about, does he, boss? Go on, Morgan. Don't keep him waiting. Tell him. He's crazy, isn't he, boss? Well, isn't he? Like I said, Luke, he's a smart man. But he isn't going to live long either. No, boss. <laughs> You all right, son? Sure. Look out! He was pulling a derringer on you. Uh, good shooting, Rusty. And that was for Lieutenant Hayes, too. Uh, $5,000 reward for the Comanche kid. Well, son, we're going to town. Now, wait a minute, Rusty. Come on, there's Mrs. Hayes. 
I heard you were leaving, ma'am. Oh, yes. As soon as the children finished saying goodbye. Well, Miss Hayes, uh, uh, well, Rusty here has something for you, haven't you, Rusty? What's that? You know, that envelope you said belonged to Mrs. Hayes. I'll follow you, son. It's right there in your pocket. The other one. Oh, this? Oh, why, sure, sure. <laughs> Something from the state of Texas, ma'am, to show their appreciation for what your husband did. Thank you, Rusty. Steve. Goodbye, boys. Uh, ding, dang it, I... I... Goodbye, ma'am. Good luck. Uh, Come on. Hey, now, where did you get that? Now, idea? Rusty, remember when I was a recruit, you used to make me look up at that flag? Yes, but what's that... I've never with... forgotten what you told me. Son, you'd say, remember. Yep. Whatever you do, wherever you are, you're first, last, and always a Western, Western Marshal. What? <laughs> Come on, you old maverick. <laughs> wonderful episode of Western television and how great it was to hear character actor John Cliff utter those immortal Western cliched words I'll head him off at the pass my name's Bob Terry we hope you'll join us again here next time for the Forsaken Westerns have a great day <laughs>